All right, here we are with my favorite pump of all time, Putzmeister 38.5, if you didn't already know that from previous videos. And we have with us Eric Duker from Cancrete, and we're gonna look at the Ergo 3. The answer to all my complaints with Ergo 2 lays right in front of us. So how do we boot it up to start? So we pop the e-stop out, enter start sequence is just push and hold the power button. And then we wait for the remote to boot up. In the meantime, we can see that we're connected to the remote control receiver on the pump. And we're booted up here now on the screen. So we have a screen here, and what's new with Ergo 3 is we have a screen here now as well. Um, they mimic each other, so a lot of the information that's available on the remote is also available there. Um, there's more information available here for diagnostics. So right now it's telling us that we have an e-stop on the remote control. What's neat with Ergo 3 is that if somebody goes around, presses your e-stop button, we'll also get a notification that there is a, I'm going to hide this one here, and we can scroll, and that there's also an e-stop. Uh, I can get to it. Maybe I need to clear this one. It will also tell us if there's an e-stop on the base structure. Ah, okay. So now you know that somebody pressed a button on you, and that's what the problem is. The old days when guys would play a prank on you and smash your e-stop. You're walking around the, you, the other side you of the call them puts tech support. I can't get my pump to work, and then yeah. you find the button pushed in. Yeah, I remember yeah. those. So now, right now, it says agitator safety cutout triggered, which is just because on every new pump you have to go to the back step to charge your accumulator and turn on your agitator. Right. Okay. And that's so, they've had that for years yeah, now. Yeah. Right? So same thing as always. Lock to the back here. Little known thing about the rubber flap is that if you don't like that it's in your way for the job, that's magnetic, it's not aluminum. Is that new or have they always had that? It's always been there. Oh, I didn't yeah, know that. Just that okay. little strip. Little well, known fact, he said. <laughs> yeah, I didn't know it. I didn't know But that. I also know very little, so that makes sense. <laughs> so all this is telling us now on the remote is we get a yellow warning, which is just an advice. Um, and on the screen, it'll tell us what it is. I know exactly what it is. Until the oil is 25 degrees Celsius, it's going to limit you to 50% pumping speed. Oh, okay. So that's what the yellow means. So red okay. is that the pump is not going to pump. For the first reason was the e-stop. The second reason was the agitator. Okay. We've cleared everything that was red, and now yellow is just limiting until the oil warms up. In a really cold climate like um, Alberta winter, minus 25, how long could it take for that oil to, to heat up? It, um, if you leave your truck in outrigger mode, it sends that oil over the relief valve of the outrigger circuit. Okay. Um, and our oil volumes are about half of what, say, a 2012 model year pump was. Yeah. So it, realistically, 10 to 15 minutes and you should be able okay, to Okay, so right leaving it in outrigger mode is the trick to building some heat then? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So we can go back over to the computer here. So what we're going to do is we're just going to ignore the hydraulic fluid low temperature to get it off the screen. And we'll go back to our home screen. So this is where the pump would have booted up to. Um, this gives you your basic information across the bottom. So engine RPM, of course the engine isn't running. Pumping pressure, um, showing you whether the pump is on. Um, this shows us that we're in PTO. This shows us how much horsepower we're drawing. And this shows us how many pump hours are on this pump. So 5.3 hours was factory test time. Okay. Um, so if we scroll across, so the, going back here to this one, the horsepower. Yep. What 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 is the benefit of knowing that? Um, so you can tell the overall power consumption while you're pumping. So that's a combination of the flow rate and the pressure that you're pumping at. And we max out at whatever the engine puts out minus what the transmission loses and the gearbox loses. And then we set a maximum kilowatt parameter in the pump computer so that we can't stall the engine. So this is just for information. Okay, it gives and then so like say that you're doing a mix and you're starting to get higher on your pressure on here, you can look at that and go, I'm reaching near pump capacity, we've got to do something. Correct. Or, well, what'll happen is once you reach near the capacity, the pump computer will automatically reduce your pump volume. Your pressure will maintain the same, right. but it'll reduce your pump output until you're at a point where the um, the engine has enough horsepower. To increase it again. Yeah. Okay. So I'm just thinking for some applications, if you go and all of a sudden you have one truck, mm -hmm. there's something wrong with the mix. Yeah. You can go and look at this and say, hey, there's something wrong. because. Yeah, you'd also see it on your pressure gauge. 
Yeah. Um, because as your pressure goes up, if your flow rate stays the same, um, your horsepower draw goes up as well. Right. And whether you had a 500 horsepower engine or 400 horsepower, when you're in PTO, it always derates anyways, right? Like, yeah. is there a performance advantage to 500 versus 400 on a, on a common unit like this? Not on a 16H pump kit. So okay. if you have a 13 HPD pump kit, yeah. or if we have, say, a high pressure trailer pump, yeah. ESA pump, um, we take advantage of the extra horsepower, but on a 16H, we don't. Okay, so the only advantage might be your engine's not working as hard. Yeah, with the so engine. you might get better fuel economy at certain pump speeds with certain pump kits if you right. have a 500 horse engine versus a 400. Okay. But performance-wise, no advantage. You're not going to get no. more output or anything. No, you can okay. only shove so much concrete through a five-inch pipe. This yeah. is true. So, next screen. This is just pump information. So this is a little bit of a, a clone of what we see on the remote control here right now. So if I turn on EOC here, it turns on there. If I turn on my agitator here, well, there's no engine RPM. So let's see if this even triggers it. I don't know if it will. Oh, yeah, because yeah, we're not running? Yeah. Okay. And then uh, same thing, I can turn on my lights from here. And so this shows four out of four. There's a configuration menu that you can go into and determine how many lights it turns on with one press of the button. Oh, really? Yeah, so it'll turn on. Right now, I think that turned on all of our lights. Yeah. Um, outriggers are flashing now. The LED lights will be on. If you don't want one on because it's going to mess with a laser screen or something, Yeah. then you can, you can go individual. So we can turn all those off now. Um, so the other information on here is similar to what was on the previous screen. What's new is here. And this is working time, idle time, setup time. It will also show you if you're washing, if your water pump is on. Oh, okay. And all of this information shows at what time of day we were set up, we were idling, and we were working. And all of this is also available in machine cockpit from any phone or any computer anywhere in the world. Uh, and that's on all machines 2020 and newer? Ergo 2 and newer. And any machine that we call EPS. So if you had a screen on your remote, and yeah. either a green screen or a color screen on the pump, yeah. that hardware can be added and there's no subscription fee it's a gps and a pump um, data tracker so guys that are paying 30 40 bucks a month for gps right now you can turf that and you can and, use and the, link up to yeah, machine cockpit for no for no charge currently correct well yeah. um, so the settings menu we can go in here and configure how many lights get turned on date and time whether your oil cooler is set to auto or on and if you mess everything up and you don't like it you just hit the reset trash button and start over hmm. OSS, um, so in this machine, it shows us in real time where the boom is. So if you take a look out here, the boom over that outrigger. is over that outrigger, and this is exactly where it's shown on here, and this updates in real time also on your remote control. Um, so what's handy here is depending on the boom model and what options are available, as soon as we have what's called full flex support, where we can put our outriggers wherever we want them, it will show in real time where those outriggers are as well. So the 28 will have that. The 28 will have that, and the, then the, the 47. The 28, the 28 will have that. 47 will too. You can run but that. The 28. I like the 28. I don't like big pump stand. 47 is for you. 28 is for me. <laughs> so this screen, um, on a pump with EBC, which is our 63 meter model, this will show in real time the exact configuration of your boom. This pump does not have EBC. We only offer it on the 63s, so it shows us the angle of where the boom so is. So the 63 still has it with the boom damping, yeah. the one-touch control. Yeah, auto-fold, auto-unfold. And that's standard on the 63? Yeah. Okay. So this is our real-time graphic of the pump kit. So Y165 is our accumulator dump valve coil. There's a check valve there to say that it's powered. Um, Y4 and Y5 are our S-tube shift valve at the back of the pump, and when they are activated with power, you'll see that a check mark will appear in either one of those. And your proximity switches are here, and they will light up green as well as the pump strokes. So no more climbing up on the deck looking for the light show. No, or if you're having a problem with pumping, you can go look at the deck, see what the lights show, and make sure that they match with what the lights show here. Uh, okay. So for diagnosis, even if the guy running the pump doesn't really know, or guy or gal running the pump doesn't know if you're on the phone with tech support, they can walk you through and you can give them all the pertinent information. Yeah. Or a lot of it. And if it, um, if the proc switch does actually have a problem and the pump has thrown a code, yeah. that code is available through machine cockpit. So your dispatch can just log on, look at your truck and say, oh, there's these many fault codes active and this is what it is. And it's for the Y4 coil, the Y5 coil, your dump valve shorted, you have a bad wow. proc so switch. So the operator's on site pulling his arrow trying to 
clear the boom or something, the me mechanic or whomever is back at, at home base can, can access that and sort it out yeah. while, yeah. while he's dealing with a, a boom full of concrete or whatever the situation may be. Yeah, and okay. then your dealer or Putzmeister can also have access to it if you grant them that, and yeah. then you can just call into them. If you're not familiar with it, you don't understand it, you can call the factory and say, hey, my machine with machine cockpit has a problem, yeah. can you help me out? And they'll log in and say, yeah, your oil's overheating. Wow, that's an amazing feature. Yeah. So this is our notifications or warning screens. Um, so right now, it shows us that we have one. We're gonna click on that, and it tells us our hydraulic fluid temperature is too low. So right now, that limits us to 50% pumping speed. It won't let you rev your engine all the way to maximum um, until the oil hits 25 degrees Celsius. Okay. Um, right now, I don't think the date and time are set in the computer, but it tells us at the time that it logged it. Yeah. There's also a fault log, so if a, uh, an operator phones in and says, hey, last week Wednesday I had this problem, Yeah. we can go back and look and see what happened last week Wednesday and say, okay, well, there was no code, so we don't know what you're talking about. Yeah. Or, oh yeah, we see this, and here's what the problem is. Next screen here. This is your input and output screen. So if you want to know what everything that is coming out of the pump computer is doing and everything that's going back into the pump computer is doing, this is your screen for diagnostics. So you can scroll through all of the different items here and it will tell you if, so fault might just mean that it's not powered or that it's open circuit. And it goes through all of your different settings. So this one here is a proc switch and it's saying that it's zero. E-stop, channel one, 24 volts, showing a one, which means that it's active. So if we figure out which E-stop button this is, and we go around and press them, it should change what the E-stops are showing. It might take us a little while. I don't know if we want to do it on camera. We'll do it after. Yeah, but, okay. Yeah. Um, and so this is just for mechanics to figure everything out. Everything from, is your water pump on? So right now the output zero. If it was one, it would mean the, the water pump is on. Vibrator. Uh, very common, a guy says my vibrator isn't working. We can go in here and at least check to see that the switch is telling the right. computer is to turn it on. Right, is it the motor or is the wiring? Is it the right, relay, right. where's the problem? Um, so just everything that the pump does is all in here and it's all available for anybody to figure it out. So for diagnosis for the guys in the shop, way easier yeah. having this stuff. Yeah, yeah, there's no guessing of, hey, it's not working, and then you get it out of a multimeter and start from there. Yeah. Um, the pump logs error codes, and if the error code doesn't tell you, then you can just go to the screen and you can figure out what's on and what's well, not. Well, even with being able to backtrack with the timestamps, you know, often a guy takes a pump out and says, oh, it's having this issue, and then you call the operator that had it out before the weekend, say four days earlier. Hey, did you notice this thing on the job site? Oh, yeah, right, and they don't mention it the day of. So now you can actually backtrack and you've actually got like you said you've got fault codes and for intermittent things it's easy, easier diagnosis i would think yeah yeah 100 percent so this screen is all locked by default um there's three access levels here putzmeister dealer and end user so in here to do end user is replacing parts and teaching in your radio remote control so you can adjust your boom speeds without a laptop. Oh, wonderful. So we actually, we don't need a laptop to change anything in here because we have this screen back. We can change parameters. We can adjust your truck. We can plug in and have the software to do it quickly, yeah. or we can do it with no laptop or walk somebody through it remotely as well. Um, replacing parts is something like if you have to, if you wreck your slewing resolver, you have a boom party, it gets kicked and you need to replace it. That has to be zeroed when your boom's in the cradle. Oh, okay. It's uh, no longer, there's no laptop needed. You just come in here give you a code to enter and you can zero out your slewing encoder. Um, emergency contact and then machine data. And all of this machine data is also available through machine cockpit. Um, so you can monitor from your office how many strokes are on your pump and how many cubic meters it's pumped. And then you can use that without going to every truck in the yard. Um, and you can do your pipe maintenance, right. um, your mud cups, your hopper maintenance. All for machine cockpit. All for machine cockpit. That's amazing. So that's really it for this screen. All the same stuff is available on the remote control. Um, the advantages to the remote control over Ergo This is, this is the best, best part. We, People, brought, yeah. we brought back the pump switch. Oh, the we three position forward, toggle. Off and reverse. We still have our volume control dial as always. Um, our function selector, we used to have to go from outrigger to off and our blue boom was over here. Yeah. Our, now we only use these three positions on this truck. Um, EBC is available on 63 meters, so this is our auto fold, auto unfold, prime position, and EBC operating.
Um, yeah, so all the stuff for non-EBC units, which is most of them. These three is, positions. Yeah, the first three. You don't have to skip through a bunch. That yeah. makes sense. And so for normal operation, we can take a sticky note, put it over top of the screen, and we just have a normal pump remote here that you can do everything on. So you can turn right. your agitator on and off. You can go from snail to rabbit. I love so that. They brought the button back for rabbit snail. We oh. get our vibrator back here. Our stroke change is on a hard key. Our air cuff is on a button on the side. Our horn is here and we have our RPM controls on the side. Um, the other nice features, we've got your flashlight for dark stairways. And this one, this one vibrates when the mixer driver hits the horn yeah, button? Yeah, so if somebody honks the horn at the back of the truck, this vibrates too. Um, and these are smart. Um, if you drop it, it's got a shock sensor in it. It'll just pop up and say, shocked. You have to just turn it off, turn it back okay. on. It protects itself if you drop it. I like the vibrator button because usually at the end of a load, I don't want to run the vibrator all day unless I have to because it eats up the hopper grade bushings and whatnot. Turbo 2 has the vibrator button too. It does. But is it a button or do you have to go through the no, screen? It's a it is. But like for the, the end of the load, when the truck's empty, I like to, to buzz the vibrator yeah. just when, when the guy's scraping a shootout, just to kind of pull things down a bit. Yeah. So it is handy having it right there. Um, if you're familiar with antennas on Ergo 2, um, we had what we called a shark fin antenna that plugged into a port on the side here. You notice that there's nothing plugged into this port on the side anymore. The only purpose for this port is to use a small hardwire cable. If your battery is dead or you lost your iLog chip, you can connect this to there and run hardwire. Okay. Your antenna is now back to a stubby antenna, like the old um, ZMSK 24 volt So you have the shark head. fin with the 100 pound magnet? Yeah, never and comes so off. those shark fin antennas were expensive and they would fill full of water often. Right. Um, the nice thing is now if your antenna fails because you kick it off, you're not dead in the water. Everything keeps working. Oh, You just right. have limited range. Okay. So and what would you say the range is limited to without the antenna? Like 50 right. feet, 100 if the, feet? If the cabinet's open, maybe 100 feet. Okay. The nice thing is, is we're down to like a $40 antenna instead of a $1,000 antenna. It's $1,000, wow. Yeah, so what, um, for for secondary or backup remote, what, what are we at now with Ergo 3? What are we using? Um, so there's one, it looks like the old orange spectrum boxes. Um, it's on this pump somewhere, maybe okay. it's at the shop. But it is uh, twin joystick proportional, has all these same buttons across it, but no screen. Oh, that's the one that we had on the demo pump for the rodeo yesterday. I probably, I probably have a picture of it somewhere. Yeah, 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 okay. And so that hardwire remote, you unplug this. There is a spool of hardwire cable that plugs into that connector. And then this little connector screws into the side of the hardwire oh, so cable. So back to a legit hardwire that doesn't rely on anything. This, yeah. this can fail and it's a complete bypass for that system. The amount, amount of times on the older pumps where there was an issue and, and plugging in the hardwire solved it yeah. was, was, yeah, was a very, very handy thing to have, very handy so, option to have. So to go into the panel here, we added a couple of neat functions. So this is the whole pump here. Um, so it looks this, so simple now. Yeah, so an Ergo 2 was similar to this. The wiring is almost the same and the hydraulics are the same as Ergo 2. So this is our modem for machine cockpit. Um, this is our uh, boom outrigger detection module. So that's what makes the horn honk when you go into outrigger um, and what makes the beeper in the cab go off okay. when you try to drive away if the boom's in the air. Um, all of our fuses here, um, our relays here. We have a couple of maxi fuses here. Um, the one thing you'll notice, uh, there's two actually two things in here to point out. We have two stickers here, a blue one and a green one. Our emergency stroke change kit now plugs in in the panel instead of having to remove the plastic cover and going directly oh, onto the valves. Oh, the coils, yeah, okay. So That's better. It plugs in here, it gives you two alligator clips to go to your batteries, yeah. and you end up with a toggle switch in your hand to stroke the pump, yeah. and another switch for forward reverse. Nice. So now the operator can't accidentally put the dump valve um, connector onto the, uh, the, the S tube coil yeah. or mess up the connections at the back. Um, you don't need any tools to do it. And you don't have 30 or 40 feet of wire to get from the battery box to the back to the of the back. pump. Yeah. Correct. And then the pigtail for pumping is long enough to reach to the back. Oh, perfect. So you can stand on the deck. Now, the other thing you might notice is this switch that's here. Um, it was triggered on. I must have not turned it off on the last demo. But if we turn this on and we go to the panel on the front, I'm curious to see if that worked. Yeah. So. We had guys say, look, if everything's going wrong and I can't figure it out, I just want a switch that allows me to finish pumping or to clean out. So that is your switch. So machine is running on own risk in rough mode. So this is essentially, you can bypass your temperature sensor, your slewing sensors, any safety uh, feature that's on the pump aside from the hopper grade switch and the e-stops. Okay. We can now bypass them and continue to pump if we're overheating. We can't swing the boom because something happened. Yeah. You just want to get um, everything wrapped up. 
Um, and it also tells us here on the remote that we're in that mode. Oh, okay. And so we can twist off the turret hoses, we can overheat the hydraulic pumps. All kinds of fun stuff. Yeah, and so <laughs> this is very much use it on your in your own risk. Right. Um, but it bypasses, um, really it bypasses for somebody that doesn't totally understand how the system works. Yeah. Yeah, it's a good option when you're in a pitch, yep. absolutely. Yeah, and so this isn't, you know, this is like the uh, the key switch on a crane over, over right. it. Um, same thing, only use it if you're really in trouble. So. And what um, what do we have for hand valves now, for, for manual boom valves? We have, yeah. we have levers again, Yeah, correct? so we have levers like we used to on the, on the older pumps on the other side. Okay. Um, and they're just a little cover you pop off and you've got a boom outrigger activate and then all your functions like we used to. Yeah. All of our valves that run the pump have palm buttons on them, but we also have a physical handle on them now too. Oh, they do, okay. Yeah. So every valve, you don't have to push palm buttons in on any of the valves anymore. They all right. have a handle to operate them. Nice. Yeah, yeah, Dan loved the uh, the boom valves without levers on them. <laughs> you couldn't tell from the snickering. Love, he, he, love, did, he didn't. Love he didn't. Is, uh, is not necessarily a word I would use. But no, I would say everything that I disliked about Ergo 2, which admittedly was, was a fair bit, and even some of the things I disliked about the previous generation remote to Ergo 2, like not having the rabbit rabbit turtle boom speed switch, they've, they've brought all that stuff back. Especially the three position pump toggle is, is huge. What do you think, Dan? Like what do you think? It. I like it. I wish, I wish we could just put it on my pump. Guys with Ergo 2 right now, is Ergo 3 an available? Can you update? I mean, I'm sure it would. Not right now, but we're working on it. Okay, so it might be possible in the future. No promises. Okay, so there it is in a nutshell, Ergo 3. I need to get one, which would require getting a new pump which seems to be the, the current conundrum. I don't know why you're still waiting. Do you have financing in the booth? Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe I'll, I'll forge the accountant's signature. Perfect, done, awesome. You still have to make your payments. Oh, man, there's always <laughs> something with you. <laughs> but anyhow, no, that's, that's fantastic. I'm super excited about this and hopefully we have one in our fleet soon and we can do some, uh, some fancy fun YouTube videos with it. So thanks again, Eric, for your time and your Thank expertise. You. It looks very promising. I think you guys really, uh, Took some customer feedback from Ergo 2 and implemented into Ergo 3. And uh, it looks like a winner to me. Over and out, keep on pumping.